The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus answered, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy, and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. I sometimes imagine the Blessed Trinity having this conversation among themselves. What would it be like if there were one person down there on earth who completely, wholeheartedly, unflinchingly, courageously, and humbly, fully imitated Jesus Christ. And the result of that conversation, St. Francis. Through a conversion process that we don't have to go into here, he undertook to put Jesus Christ so totally at the center of his life that absolutely nothing else mattered. There were two points in his life that gave witness to that. One was when he regretfully, I think, but firmly had to detach himself from the entire way of life that he had inherited from his father. His father was part of a new and prosperous merchant class in uh, the 12th century. And that was a time when a very, very profitable trade uh, began to develop with the East, especially in uh, silks and fine um, fabrics. And his father, in Assisi, was able to be part of that developing uh, merchant middle class that began to achieve prosperity. He was a good Catholic, his father was, went to Mass every Sunday, tried to live a moral life in the conventional sense. But when push came to shove, what was more important was to maintain the trappings of prosperity than actually, sincerely probing what it means to follow Jesus. And Francis came to a crisis point in his life where if he was going to be faithful to Jesus, he had to say within himself, either or. And a 
as that that provoked him to remove all of his father's belongings, his clothing, and hand it back to him, and to be covered with the mantle of the church. In Assisi, one of the things that is on display is Francis's tunic. And one of the things that is, two things are striking about Francis's own garment that they have on display. One is how small it is. He was a tiny man. The other is it was patched countless times. It was like there was no original cloth left on it. He was it was continually patched and repaired, sometimes with different shades and different qualities of cloth. So it wasn't a neatly pressed and tailored Franciscan habit like we so often think of and see. It was simply rags sewn together. He didn't choose that kind of life for its own sake. Rather, he chose Jesus Christ at the center. And all of these other things just kind of fell into order. In other words, uh, they fell away. Because the only enduring thing was to live in accord with um, the simplicity, the trust, the humility and the emptiness of Jesus Christ to allow God the Father to totally take possession of him. The second thing that was very much a sign and a turning point for St. Francis was even after he had decided to follow Christ, he had this aversion to the people who were cast aside, living in a little isolated, quarantined colony down in the valley, the lepers. And he would, if he saw one, he would go the other way. Until he decided he needed to face his own barriers, his own aversion. And when he saw a leper, he not only gave him some alms, but he embraced him and kissed him and called him brother. And it's also interesting that the first place where his group of brothers lived, those who were seeking to adopt his way of life, was right next to that leper colony. It's uh, rather wonderful to see it uh, down in the valley uh, near Assisi, you can see the town of Assisi up on the hill, and here is this small chapel where the leper colony stood, and the original lodging of the brothers was right next to it. So he embraced the things that he had difficulty with as God's way of drawing him and others to himself. Uh, you can't see Jesus in the least of his brothers and sisters. You can't find him here. After possibly St. Paul, although I kind of doubt it, uh, Francis was the first known uh, stigmatist who received in his hands and his feet the wounds of Christ. They weren't given at the beginning. They were very close to the end of his life. And those wounds actually physically debilitated him a great deal. And they became a source of embarrassment. It wasn't something that, oh wow, look at me, I've got the wounds of Christ. No, he wanted to hide it. Because it was an embarrassing gift. And yet it was the Lord's way of showing that to the rest of us, I think. If you want to know what authentically following Jesus Christ means, 
read the gospel in the light of friends because he is the most perfect reflection of what it means to completely follow Jesus.